Welcome back to the Factor on Censored. According to the Society for Human Resource Management, 64% of U.S. workers surveyed said they experience or witness people being treated poorly in the workplace due to their political views. Leadership expert Anton Gunn talks with us about what you can do if you're a victim or witness in the workplace. And joining us tonight here on the Factor on Censored, we have with us Anton Gunn, who is a leadership expert and former presidential appointee. Glad to have you here on The Factor Uncensored. There was a time, Anton, when we left our politics and religion at home, but these days many people are defined by their politics. I mean, it sets us apart from the color of your hair, and so it's a part of our lives, and when it involves or invades your space at work and makes makes life difficult for you, how do you deal with that? Because we're seeing that more and more in the workplace, where people are finding themselves almost segregated because of their politics. Yeah, it's a very difficult subject and a difficult time for all of us. We experience so many things through the lens of our lives, and politics is no different than anything else. So when people are experiencing this, when they feel like they might be persecuted because of it, I want you to understand this, that, you know, injustice happens to everyone in the workplace. We all feel like we've been treated unfair. And our research shows that about 66% of people experience it in a year's time, but 23% experience it every month. So what I tell people is to acknowledge the emotions around what you're feeling. It's okay to acknowledge those emotions, but it's also important to document what you're experiencing. So if people are pressing you or pushing on you because of your beliefs or whatever, you just got to understand that not everybody is prepared to have the same conversation. So the more time that you think uh, critically about what you want to say, have some empathy for other people, and think about what you shouldn't say, because you always shouldn't talk about it. You got to understand what you should say and shouldn't say. That helps you to begin the process of knowing how to deal with a difficult situation in the workplace because of your politics. And when we return here on The Factor on Censored, Anton tells us some of the worst case scenarios when it comes to treating people poorly at work based on their politics. And welcome back to The Factor on Censored. Now, according to the State of Workplace Injustice Report, commissioned by leadership expert Anton Gunn, 66% of employees experience workplace injustice. Anton joins us now again to talk about some of the worst case scenarios he has seen that are related to politics. How ugly can it get for someone or how difficult can it get for someone in their workplace if politics plays a role? What, what is the worst you've seen? Well, I, I would tell you, I've seen the entire gambit because there are some organizations who have specific policies against talking about political and social issues in the workplace. And if your company has a policy or practice that says you can't have these conversations at work, there are people who have lost their jobs for violating the policy in the workplace. And yes, I know we all have freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is something that we all have, but guess what? You don't have freedom of speech when you're on somebody else's job and when somebody else is paying the check. Bingo. So you have to understand that freedom of speech happens in your house, out in the street, uh, or when you can stand on the corner and yell it to the top of your lungs, but you don't have the right to do that in the workplace, particularly if it disrupts what your company is supposed to be doing. So first and foremost, everybody needs to understand the policies. The other thing is that some organizations smartly say, you know what? We don't believe that you can divorce yourself from your life, that who you are, who you volunteer in your own time is who you come to work. So we're going to create safe spaces and open forums at particular times where people can talk about these issues. And mm -hmm. what does that mean, safe space and open forums? It's not every day around the water cooler. It's not just because you want to talk about it today, but literally having employee forums to process what the election might mean for our company. Some companies literally say, we're watching the election because if this happens, this could have a positive or negative impact on how we run our business. These are conversations that are normally happening. But again, I've seen the full gambit, which is companies who embrace it with open forums and other companies that says, we have a policy that prohibits it. And if you do this and continue to do this, you could lose your job. Now, if you have a person who's being persecuted at work because of their politics, What's the first piece of advice you would give to them? Is human resources a place you should go or your immediate manager or supervisor? 
Yeah, so I would say the first thing you should do is really dissect what is happening. So if someone says something to you, you know, I don't like you because of X, Y, and Z or because you support X, Y, and Z issue, is that an isolated incident? Is this person just saying that and it's one time? Then I would say it's okay to be thoughtful about what they said and either have a direct conversation or diffuse the situation by saying, I understand and I respect your position and I hope you will understand and respect my position and let that be the end of it. But if somebody continues to bring things to you over and over again in a repeated fashion, I would encourage you again to document how often it happens, what's said, who was around you, who other people experienced it and saw what this person said, and make sure you take that information to your supervisor. Mm -hmm. Now, God forbid, it's your supervisor who is coming at you in this way, then I would definitely encourage you to take this to human resources and make sure you bring documentation with you. Don't go to human resources and say this, that, and the third without having any proof or any evidence. That's why it's important first to assess and document how often it happened, who said it, who else was there, uh, what you experienced and what you felt at that real time. Human resources is a safe space and a place where you can go to at least get some real direct advice on how to support you and manage through that situation. Now, how do you ensure that it's not you? Because many people will come to work and they'll say certain things uh, and and declare certain things at work when it comes to politics, and, and then they feel like they're the victim. Yeah, so that's a great point and a great question. Uh, the first thing I would tell people, you got to have a checkup from your neck up. Are you coming into work with a chip on your shoulder, angry about what's going on in the world or because your candidate didn't win or because people didn't support your issue that way? You got to recognize that we live in a representative democracy. All of us, none of us get our way all of the time. So the main point is to recognize that it ain't about you sometimes. Sometimes it's much bigger than you. You may be on the wrong side of an issue. So don't be the issue. Don't be the person who feels like you have to punish people and press your ideology, your ideas, and your focus on other people. Remember this, you work at a place of employment and y'all are on the same team. That company has a goal, it has a mission, it has a perspective. That's the first thing that you need to hold on to when you show up to work is why am I here? Are you here to press a political agenda or are you here to get the job done? And if you remember that you're there to get the job done, you should recognize that there are people on your team who look differently than you, who think differently than you, who have a different background and a different perspective. But guess what? All of you still want to get the job done. So don't be the person who makes the workplace toxic, who makes it poisonous because you want to bring your opinion, your ideas to work every day. If it has nothing to do at work, then be cautious about raising it up at work. Mm -hmm. And if it does get raised at work, be thoughtful and cautious about what you say in response to what gets raised. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more Factor. And welcome back to The Factor Uncensored. We finish our conversation with leadership expert Anton Gunn. He tells us what you should do if you're a bystander seeing someone being treated badly due to their political beliefs. And finally, for those who may be on the outside looking in, they're not involved, but they see a co-worker or a friend at work who may be persecuted. What would be their responsibility? We always say, see some, if you see something, say something. Should you get involved and how should you take that route? Absolutely, this is exactly the TSA mantra, is if you see something, say something, and you need to bring that into the workplace. What everybody wants in any particular situation is an ally or somebody willing to stand up to help diffuse the situation. Don't exacerbate the situation, diffuse it. And that literally is simple as saying, hey, I know you guys are in a heated discussion, but let's calm it down. We all have some work to do. And also you can be, if a person is being bullied or ostracized because of their opinions, you also can document what happens and report that to HR. You're an innocent bystander, a witness to what happens. Try your best to defuse it, but also don't be afraid to document and report that to human resources so they can get in and step in to defuse the situation and hold people accountable for doing things that they shouldn't be doing in the workplace. And what would be your advice to management of a company where they may have the culture there and they don't 
actively involve, get involved or try to stop it or don't know how to stop it, don't know how to address it. What would be your advice to managers and companies where if they have a group of employees and one or many of them feel persecuted because of their political beliefs, how do you tell them to address it and handle it? So for every manager and leader that runs an organization or leads in an organization, this is probably the most important point you need to pay attention to. That in our study, we saw that only 17% of employers did something about it when employees reported injustice. And so that means 83% did nothing when it happened to their employees. So I'm telling management, you have to do something. So here are the three things I recommend you do. Number one is to have clear policies and restate those policies around what is allowed and not allowed when it comes to political discussions in the workplace. Secondly, when traumatic things happen like 9-11 or like the death of George Floyd or the recent assassination attempt, you got to have an open forum or discussion to let people process their emotions or experiences. There's no reason to pretend like real things didn't happen because it affects people differently and trauma is a real thing. So the open forums is second. The third thing you want to do is you want to take complaints seriously. And when I mean seriously, if someone reports that they're experiencing bullying or mistreatment or injustice because something happens, investigate that complaint and hold people accountable for what they did to make a bad situation worse. I encourage every organization to do that because if you can give clear rules of the road to your employees around what's allowed and what's not allowed, and the lines are very clear that if you step across that line, what's going to happen, you'll get people who will have more civil conversations in the workplace and they'll stay focused on the mission and the margin, not on the messiness that's going on in our world. All right, Anton Gunn, leadership expert, we want to thank you for your time and for joining us here on The Factor Uncensored. For those who are interested in more of what you have to say in a book or whatever you have, <laughs> where can they find you on social media? You can find me at Anton J. Gunn. I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram. You can find me in all kinds of places. I'll be there and be happy to help and serve you.